Well, I'm back again to the final thing that I introduced Glenn. I feel a special bond to Glenn because of at least four occasions at State Bar meetings in uh, all in Cooperstown and other places. I have been mistaken for Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, the disappointed look on their faces when they come in talking to Vince Chang and not the Glenn truly speaks volumes about Glenn's standard and popularity. Well, Glenn is known for his calm under fire, his patience, and his balanced energy. His experience in life in an interesting community, like a large law firm, the challenges of small law firm practice. He's filled a host of roles in many bar associations, including the three represented here today. Well, more than three, really. <laughs> in short, the diversity of Glenn's experiences have been the ideal preparation for Glenn to serve as a great leader of the New York State Bar Association. Well, Glenn grew up in Chinatown and lived there until he was 10 years old. Then he went to uh, a similar place, Yale University, in 1971, <laughs> and Boston University School of Law in 1974. Glenn has had experience in both large and small firms. He worked in a very large firm, Peter Deere Brothers, in Hong Kong and New York from 74 to 77, before joining his father, uh, you know, that Ler Ku, Lerbo, Lao Ki, and Lane in White Plains, and Ki and Lao Ki in Chinatown. He and LP focuses on residential and real estate transactions and on trust and state work. Uh, areas that I must uh, say are for the name. Glenn has done bar association work for at least 17 years. He served as the president of Abney in 1997 and 1998, and on the board of NICLA from 2000 to 2004. He has been a member of state bar for 15 years and was a member of the special task force on the state of our courthouses and the special committees on illegal specialization multi-jurisdictional practice, and sarbanes toxic. And his accomplishments talk, go on and on. Glenn is the vice chair of the board of the uh, Greater New York City YMCA, the board member of the Fund for Modern Courts, the New York Bar Foundation, and the U.S. AG Institute. He was appointed by former Chief Judge Judith Kaye to serve on the commission to examine solo and small firm practice. He's committed to promote trust and confidence in the legal system. And on a more personal note, Glenn has been a mentor and inspiration to me. I have often had a good sense to call Glenn during times when I was considering accepting a role on which Glenn had previously occupied. On all those occasions, Glenn's advice was right on target. Indeed, as far as a result of Glenn's advice, and that of Catherine Christian, another great bar leader, Glenn had dedicated so much time and effort to NICA. Because Glenn correctly told me that NICA was a worthwhile organization for me to join. Well, Glenn is now facing the challenge of service of police for all New York lawyers and managing the state bar staff of 125 people, larger than most law firms. Glenn's deep for his presidency is continuity and change, question of balance. He has an ambitious agenda for a short one year term. But in meeting this challenge, Glenn will be able to call upon the most formidable ally of all, his father, Norman Law, well key, a great lawyer and a great man. I welcome back Herbert Lane for a few words about Glenn and Norman. Thank you, Ben. So nice to be said. I want to thank them to Glenn again for being my, my bar mentor. They absolutely are. Um, how do I know Glenn Lowkey? I actually started practice back in 1980, whatever I want to say it. My first closing ever as a real estate solo practitioner was at the firm of Key Lowkey. I went in frightened, not knowing what to do, and it was just an amazing thing how smart, respectable, and how kind he was to walk me through my transaction. Subsequently, the ladies got so busy that I think I was there almost every day. And I think staff here that knows me for all that time. Uh, I learned how to be a good attorney, how to be an ethical attorney, and he continued to serve as a role model for me um, over the years, encouraged me to continue my bar activities. At times when I seem to have too much on my plate, um, but I will persist and know that it's a positive thing to come back to the Asian community. Um, he has been my guiding light to encourage me to continue to get back. He is always a gentleman when I speak to other people. Um, who epitomizes the Asian professional who is quite slender, and I think some of you have alluded to that. He is strong and intelligent, but always with sincerity and humility towards others. Uh, at a recent um, New York State Bar reception, the Yale Club embarrassed me, and I get people been asking me about this, that I am his cousin, which is kind of true, his aunt Jenny, he, and my aunt Helen Ling are sisters. Which probably means, understandably, why sometimes we are always on the same page as to our ethics. Um, and have you mentor others to do good in the world. Glenn, we are looking forward to your year as New York State Bar President and bringing progress, diversity, uh, justice, and collaboration to our respective bars. I originally was applauded to 
speak about Lynn, but I wanted to first admit because I know she has spent a long time. And um, I'm putting the place the person who's next to introduce Lynn Lemke is his dad, who's very special. I can't speak with him, and I can't take the place of his dad to introduce him. Norman Lemke is one of Very accomplished. I don't even want to go on to all the affiliations you can read about it, but I just want to say, please, and more importantly, that the highest and proudest accomplishment of Norman Malky is being a dad and being the dad of Glenn Malky. Uh, it is at this moment I sincerely introduce Norman Malky, who will introduce our guest of honor to Glenn Glenn. Thank you. Outside of the office, I can understand why he never shows up in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, he does have a family. Uh, his brother Esther, Esther Key, my wife. He's here. He's here.
they have so much to offer um, in terms of experience and knowledge, um, and, and yet uh, we find it difficult to connect with uh, the young lawyers coming in. Um, I have an interesting, uh, I was at a program and somebody uh, brought to my, uh, to all of our attention, uh, a recent study that came out by, I think, Professor Lawrence Krieger uh, in Florida. And uh, the, this was a study in which they, they tried to measure the well-being of lawyers based upon certain factors, and this is younger lawyers. And this was the first serious statistical study that was undertaken in this way. And so they measured um, things like whether you are a law review, you know, how much you made, whether you're a big firm, small firm, or whatever. Well, it turned out that our traditional measures of achievement, such as law review and things like that, had absolutely zero correlation to, to um, the well-being of a lawyer. What did they treasure the most, young lawyers? A sense of autonomy and a sense of purpose. And those are the things that I think the Bar Association can offer, a Bar Association. Uh, when I travel, I, I often tell people, I said, just join the Bar Association. It doesn't matter which one. I'm not pushing any particular one. But join the Bar Association. For myself, um, I, I don't look at my achievement as, well, let me put it this way. I look at my achievement as a reflection of how open the Bar Association has become. Um, you know, the Asian American Bar Association gave me a start, but New York County Lawyers Association certainly uh, gave me a lot of opportunity and to be on their board was a great learning experience. And then um, they made me the, uh, a delegate to the New York State Bar Association and I got engaged there. So becoming um, president now just shows me how open the system is. But it doesn't count for much if we don't have the, the, uh, the lawyers coming in and recognizing that. So um, I hope that you will all gather any young lawyers that you meet, that you will help them understand this. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very important message. Uh, um, you know, it's, uh, I was at the uh, an, an ABA uh, convention recently, and we had screens in front of us where certain people were talking to us from around the world. And, and, and one of them was a young lawyer who just graduated, and she, she was clean. She basically said, you're not talking to us. Please understand. We're not really communicating correctly. Uh, we don't understand a lot of what you're saying, and you, don't, you particularly don't understand us. And I think that's our challenge, to bridge that gap of communication so that uh, we can really understand and they can understand what, where the profession is going and we can do it together. Um, I really am uh, kind of overwhelmed by, by all of this and I want to thank you all for coming here. And, uh, but uh, uh, most of all, uh, I hope that all of you uh, will really help in this effort to engage people in bar association. I've learned so much from people, and I continue to learn so much from all of the people that I meet in the bar association. And this is something that the, the newer lawyers have to understand. So I thank you all for being here. I thank my friends and my family for, for coming, and uh, I hope that uh, you have a good evening.